The key to learning any programming language or application is knowing where to find the information when you need it. No one can keep all the required information in their brain. There simply isn't enough room. I've been programming PHP for many years now, and I still need to reference the PHP function manual now and again. There are so many functions that PHP has to offer, and you may only regularly use about 10% of them. When you do need that function that you can't remember, you need to know where to find it. The first reference you should know, bookmark, and memorize is the website built and maintained by the PHP Development Group. This website address is www.php.net. You'll notice on the home page here that there is information about PHP releases, conferences, and events. From the home page, the first place to visit is the documentation area. From here, you can select the type of manual you want to view, print, or even download. I recommend viewing online. That way you know that you have the latest version of the functions and the comments that come with it. You can navigate via the table of contents, but that can be a bit confusing if you don't know exactly what you're looking for. When I use this website, it's usually to look for a specific function or a bit of information. If you look at the top right, you'll see a search box. This is the most useful tool on this website. Here you can search for a function or the information you are looking for. Let's try searching for a function. Let's say that I know I want a function that will print the information for an array, but I can't remember the name of that function. I can guess that the function will contain the word print, so I want to enter the first few characters of print. Make sure the function list is selected in the drop-down, and voila! A list of all the functions containing PRI. I see the one I want here, printr. I can select that and get a description of that function. Now this description bears a bit of examination. First, at the top, you can see you have the name of the function. Under that, in brackets, you have the listing of the PHP versions that this function is available in. Pay attention to this. If you're using PHP 4, and are viewing a function that is available only in PHP 5, it will not be of any use to you. Next, there is a quick one-liner on what this function does. Directly below that, the description is where all the most useful information is contained. The listing directly below the description is what we want to cover in a bit more detail, and this is the actual description of the function. The first bit here, bool, is the type of variable that is returned from this function. In this case, bool is short for boolean, which either returns true or false. A function will typically return either boolean, int or integer, which is a number, string, which is a bunch of text, array, a list of information, or resource, which is a reference to information. It can also return some other types, such as objects, but boolean, string, integer, array, and resource are the most common. The reason you need to know this is so that you know how to handle the function when using it in a script. For instance, in the case of print r, the function returns true or false. This means that you can put it into a variable and then use that variable to check if the function was executed properly. Or you can use the function itself to see if it has been executed properly. Return types will make more sense as we learn more about using functions in PHP. The second part of the printr description in this line is how the function is invoked, in this case simply with the words print underscore r. In the round brackets here you'll see that there are two arguments to this function. This is the information that you pass into the function. Again, this information will be clear after we have gone through the chapter on functions. For now, just know that these are called arguments. The first argument is mixed expression. This means that you can pretty much pass any variable into this function. The second argument is in square brackets. This means that it is an optional argument. You do not have to pass it into the function. If an argument is not in square brackets, then you are required to pass it to the function. 